Right, um, I've cut out all the pieces and they are in a pile to one side. I only deal with the pieces that I'm going to deal with at the moment. So I've got one or two pieces out here that I will be dealing with first, but the majority of them are out of my way because I don't need them yet. And they've all still got the paper on pinned on them. Um, my notches, they look as though they cut inwards, but I always prefer to cut them outwards because I don't want to cut into my fabric. Just in case my seam allowance is slightly off. So I cut my notches outwards. Uh, I haven't got round to putting the markings on here for the buttonhole and um, where you stitch it and that. But I have on the first three pieces that I will be using. Now on this uh, pattern there is just the one uh, uh, garment. In a lot of patterns there is like a pair of trousers and uh, or a, a top with different uh, style sleeves, short sleeve, no sleeve, long sleeve. So you have to get out of the pieces that you need because you don't need to cut them all out. But in this one, you do need to cut them all out. Apart from t number 20, which is a buttonhole guide. So once the garment is finished, you just put the buttonhole guide on them. And that tells you where to put your buttonholes. But if you look at the first page of the pattern, uh, you've got uh, here it telling you what the symbols mean. Um, there's like here, there's a symbol that basically is telling you the straight of green, and uh, you've got your notch. Those symbols mean the notches. There's your cutting line. It tells you what all the things on the pattern mean. It goes through a few other things like your markings, your cutting markings. It also gives you cutting layouts. So if your fabric is 40 inches wide, this is a layout you can follow. If it's 60, this is a layout you can follow. I do to a certain extent, but I don't religiously follow it exact. So when we've gone through that, there's so many directions. And because of this pattern, it has flat felled seams in them. Now there are different ways of doing them. And I have looked at Lurch's old denim jacket and seen how they've done them, which is a lot easier than uh, I was going to do them. And as the pattern says, in fact, I wasn't even going to do them as the pattern says, because I think it's awkward, long winded. So I was going to do them an easier way. But looking at the denim jacket, uh, that's a bought one there's an even easier way so that's what I'm going to be doing and I will show you when I do the um, flat held seams the first three pieces I will be using are piece one two and three and they show you there how they should go together so you can work through it because this is figure one showing those three pieces together and it tells you number one this is what you have to do you attach that 
that and that and they are put together with flat felled seams and I'll go that through that with you another time but on the pieces that I will use piece one two and three here is piece three and I have transferred the markings such as your pocket placement and your other pocket placement onto I don't know if you'll make it out but there is the markings required so on those first three pieces I've got the markings from the pattern onto my fabric and the easiest way of doing that is I'll show you now say for instance we wanted the top of that arrow there put a pin straight in to the top of the arrow pull your uh, fabric through so the pin sits out of the back I'm using this chalk marker and I will mark it there because I've got it right sides together, this is the wrong side I'm marking on. Pull it down because there's two pieces. Pull the top piece back and where the pin has gone in, that's where I mark. So it'll be marked on both of them. Now that's the method I use now, but I can remember when I was at school, we used to do tacking stitches. So you would take just a piece of um, thread on a needle and put the needle through the points that you want to be um, transferred to your fabric. Put your needle through so it comes out and then back through and then back through again. And then you just cut it and you cut in between there so it leaves your stitches in it's very long-winded it takes a lot longer so that is why I don't do it but that's how you do a tacking stitch and it will mark exactly where you want it marking to show anything that's going but that's how at the moment and I'll bring you back next week when we will start stitching it together. Bye! It's a perfect situation